Hi, I'm Greg Longster. And I'm Tony Kirshner from Davies Park Executive Search. We are thrilled to be sponsoring the 2012 BC HRMA Professional Mentoring Program. When I look back over the course of my career, I often reflect on the importance that mentors have served in my success and development. We are thrilled to be supporting a program that creates lasting bonds between a wide array of HR professionals. Davies Park's mission is creating success through leadership and solid mentorship is a critical step in the development of our future leaders. We wish all participants in the program the best of luck and we hope to see you soon at an upcoming event. Thank you. So good morning uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the ECHRNA's uh, professional mentoring program orientation. Uh, we are going to get underway um, just in the essence of time. I know that uh, you're all happy to run off to, to work. Um, so certainly appreciate that you've taken the time to come this morning. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Bonner and I'm for those of you who don't know me, uh, among other things, the manager of the professional mentoring program, uh, as well as the uh, member relations manager in the coastal Vancouver region. Uh, this particular session this morning is um, uh, hosted and uh, facilitated by two of the members of the mentoring program in the coastal Vancouver region. And uh, it, it's um, uh, Probably uh, an unknown, perhaps, to to uh, many of the of the just about 600 participants in the mentoring program, um, other than particularly um, uh, those who are, are involved in the uh, process. But the uh, the time and painstaking effort that has gone on behind the scenes um, in order to uh, to make the matches the best possible. Um, is I think one of the highlights of this program and quite frankly uh, I think really uh, the reason that our program um, I think year over year is, is very successful um, in the sense that we certainly have many um, uh, mentors and mentees who come back year over year and continue on with their relationship uh, as well as um, many of our mentors who uh, do come back as well year over year. Um, to help support the program. So we're very fortunate in that respect. Um, we have a, an added um, dimension this year in that we do have uh, a sponsor of our uh, professional mentoring program. Uh, Davies Park uh, Executive Search Firm have come on uh, for the, actually the next three years with us. And we're really thrilled about that because I think it's going to help uh, support some of the um, changes that we would like to um, I think look at um, with respect to the program because we are growing and uh, certainly um, you know as I, I look in the room I see um, new faces but also um, a very broad spectrum um, of our membership represented and I think that again it speaks to um, perhaps the changing face of our membership overall and so uh, I think moving forward with the mentoring program we need to be cognizant of that and, and making sure that we are meeting the needs of, of that very broad um, spectrum of, of our members. So um, we're really pleased to have them on board. Um, I, again, in the essence of time, I'm going to introduce uh, Marguerite Berenger, who uh, is one of the co-facilitators of the uh, session this morning. Marguerite is with the uh, Professional um, Mentoring Program in the Coast of Vancouver and uh, is going to take it away. So welcome everyone and thank you so much for taking some time to come out bright and early this morning. I'm not so sure about the bright part, but at least the, the early part for sure. Um, as we get started, I also want to just uh, introduce my, my facilitator and, and partner, and that's Jane Marie. And she's also going to be walking us through some of the material as well. So Jane, you're, Jane Marie and I are going to actually do a little bit of half and half. I'm going to start off and we're going to talk a little bit about the, the program and then we're going to hand it over to Jane Marie. But we're also very cognizant of the fact that often um, bringing mentoring to life is much more powerful when we can hear firsthand from some folks who are working as mentors and mentees. So what we've done today is something a little bit special. We're going to keep it nice and short and sweet for you. We only have about 10 slides that we're going to take you through, which I'm sure you're all relieved to hear. And then we're actually going to uh, turn it over to a panel discussion that we're going to have. So TJ, who's sitting at the front with us, has very kindly joined um, with us. And he's going to be representing the mentors in the room and talking a little bit about his experience in, in terms of being a mentor. And then Jane Marie herself is actually a mentee in the program and a mentor this year, but she will be representing the mentee perspective later on as well. So before we actually get started, there's just a couple of things I wanted to 
do. So first and foremost, I wanted to just highlight this document to you. This was something that was sent out uh, via email to all of you and a really wonderful resource that I encourage if you haven't had a chance to read through it, um, take the time. We'll be talking a little bit as we go through the session about some of the terrific resources that you can find in this document. Um, we're going to maybe get started with that and we're going to start off with some of the objectives and things that we hope you get out of this session today. So first and foremost, obviously we're going to talk a little bit about the structure and the program itself and the components that are involved in the mentoring program. And we really want to make sure that you walk away really understanding what is it in terms of your role as a mentor or as a mentee. We also are going to help to identify some expectations. We're going to talk about how critical that is to your success, whether you are the mentor or mentee. And we're also going to talk a little bit about how do you explore those parameters of the relationship? How do you make sure you set yourself up for success? And throughout this, we will be talking about some very specific things that will help you to set yourself up for success as you start in this partnership with your mentor or mentee. But before I go any further, can I just get a quick show of hands? How many folks in the room are actually uh, participating as mentors this year? Okay, and as mentees. I know some of you might be doing both. Okay, so we've got a good mixture of both in the room. So in terms of the agenda, as I said, what we're going to start off with is we're going to take you through kind of an overview. What's involved with this program? Then we're going to talk a little bit, very high level, you know, what does it mean to be a mentor? What's that really all about? We'll talk about roles and responsibilities. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about, you know, the stages that you go through. As you start a new relationship and a partnership with someone, what are some of the natural stages and things that you need to be aware of? And then we will uh, kind of round out the session talking a little bit about how you set yourself up for success. And we're going to talk about the importance of establishing goals for yourself as a, as a mentee and how your mentor can really partner with you and help you with that. And we'll also talk about how you make the most of every single interaction. For all of us, the one thing that's very precious is our time. And so every time that you're having those interactions with your mentor or mentee, how can you get the most out of that particular interaction? And also we'll spend a little bit of time talking about managing conflict. Um, there will be situations that you run into, particularly if you are starting off a new relationship, or it might be a little bit rocky in the beginning. And we'll talk about how can you kind of work through that um, to ensure that we can diffuse any, any conflict that may arise. And finally, we'll wrap it up uh, just highlighting a couple of other resources that are available to you to support you throughout the, the program that you'll be going through. So let's start off talking about the, the program itself. So there's basically three components to it. The first of which, of course, is the orientation session, which you're all here participating in today. And really, in terms of the overall program itself, there's really sort of two highlights or areas that we're trying to achieve through this mentoring program. First and foremost, there is kind of an educational component. For some of you, you may be participating in this because there's some very specific skills uh, that you're really trying to hone, or if you're a student, you're really trying to ensure that you do have really strong academic performance. The second component is actually around the career development, because as you're working in partnership with a mentor, it's a wonderful opportunity for you to be exposed to a new part of, of uh, HR, and certainly a great way to help you on your own career path and your own career journey. So those are sort of the two main things that we hope that you get out of this particular program. So what you'll note with this program is that it is a six-month program. Certainly, though, as you're working in partnership with your mentor and mentee, you know, if the two of you have a decision to make at the end of that um, six-month period, would you like to continue that relationship? And if you would, certainly that's an option that's available and open to you. We know that as you go through this partnership, it's a great opportunity for you to gain, to gain some great new insights as you're working with someone new, uh, to, you know, as discovering and exploring new parts of HR. Uh, we also know that for you as mentors, it's a wonderful way for you to make an, an incredible impact in a colleague's um, professional career development. So that's one of the key things. And of course, for those of you who are working towards your CHRP uh, super certification, of course, you are able to gather those points. What we would ask of you is that you do need to keep track of, of the number of hours that you're spending working in partnership with each other. And that's one of the elements that's actually available in this particular resource document. There's a little bit of a log there helping you to keep track of that information. Uh, the expectation is that you are spending approximately two to four hours meeting with your mentor or mentee and, and really building that relationship and spending that quality time together. And finally, we're going to have a wrap-up event, and this is a wonderful way for you to really just pause and to celebrate the journey that you've been on together in your partnership. And uh, Jane Marie and I were involved last year in the wrap-up event. It's a lot of fun, so we encourage you to come up with your partner at the end of the program. 
And then finally, of course, we will do a program evaluation. It's a very important component in terms of ensuring that we're continually evolving the program. We're getting that valuable feedback um, from all of you to make sure that we can make things even better. So I'm just going to pause there for a moment. Does anyone have any questions about the overall program itself? Okay, so let's move on. So we're going to talk a little bit about what is mentoring. So you know, this is a very traditional definition of mentoring. So mentoring is a one-on-one -on -one relationship, which is a, where we have a very more experienced individual who's working as the mentor, who acts as a guide and as a role model and as a sponsor for someone who's less experienced, which is the mentee. But I think the really important thing here is that it's a, it's a really it's a two-way relationship where both partners really have to feel they're getting something out of it. And it's an opportunity where you're really seeking very specific knowledge, advice, or counsel. So out of this, really, the, the most important thing is that there's some knowledge or growth that's happening for both partners. And we know, obviously, as I said, this is a very traditional sense of mentoring. Mentoring has been evolving over the last number of years. We have things like you know, reverse mentoring, group mentoring, there's all kinds of different mentoring that you'll hear about. Uh, but in this very classical uh, setup, where this is what we really feel in this particular program. It's an opportunity for you to really impart your knowledge and, and share with each other. So as I said, the most important thing in this mentoring relationship, however, is the partnership. And it is certainly a partnership where both parties have to feel that they're getting something out of it. And it's also really critical that you're working uh, together to build that relationship and to build um, those goals that you're going to be trying to attain over a very succinct period of time. If you think about it, six months is fairly short. So during that six month period, you're going to be spending a lot of time and energy in the beginning, really setting clear expectations in terms of what do you hope to get out of this period of time and making sure that you have a way to measure your success and make sure you, you actually reach your goals. So there are a number of elements that we know are key to the success of any mentoring uh, partnership. Uh, first and foremost is that reciprocity. So it's got to be equal engagement. It can't be just the mentee sort of saying, hey, I want to do this, or the mentor being pushing and guiding. It's got to be a mutual sense of level of engagement in that partnership. And as I said, ultimately it's about learning, whether it's learning a particular skill, whether it's expanding your social network or your business network, whether it's uh, exploring a new area within HR that you're trying to uh, learn about, there's got to be an end goal. So it's back to that goal setting, very critical for your success. It's also about relationships. And as you embark on this journey with your partner for the first time, we know that it takes a little bit of time. So you have to be patient. Uh, building that relationship of trust, which is critical to your success as you're working in this mentoring partnership, does take some time. And it means you have to really invest your energy in that. And we talked about partnership, right? It's, it's really the both partners having to work together. Uh, it is about the, the mentee identifying exactly what they hope to get out of the, the relationship and the mentor being supportive and helping them with that as well. And it's collaborative. As I said, you know, this is a chance where you get to share knowledge and share experiences. And that can go both ways. Um, as you're working together with your mentor or mentee, each is going to be bringing a different perspective, a fresh new perspective. And it's a great opportunity for you to expand your knowledge and your skills. And we've talked about the goals. And this is one of the things that you'll hear as we go through this session that's very, very critical to your success. Because at the end of the day, it's really about expectation setting. In order for both parties to feel that when they get to the end of that six month period, that they've gotten out of the, the relationship what they hope to, it has to do with how much work and energy did you spend up front in terms of clearly identifying what you hope to get out of it. And if you've done a really good job and you've been very crisp in your expectations and both parties are on board, then when, by the time you get to the end, you'll have a much better chance for success. And finally, as I said, it's really about that development. We talked about it, you know, as the mentee, you know, what are those specific skills that you're looking for that you hope to get out of this relationship? Or what is the new knowledge that you're hoping to achieve? Um, so those are the things that you should be really focusing on and thinking about. So let's spend a few moments talking about the roles and the responsibilities. And we'll start off first with the mentors themselves. So what we encourage you, and I know many of you have already made that first initiative and you've already reached out and met your mentee, but to reach out and make that first contact. Um, as I said, you know, as a mentor, you're playing a very active role in supporting uh, your mentee and helping them to define their strategy. So they're going to come to you and say, hey, these are the things I want to work on, but it's your chance to help mold that and shape that so they can be successful. 
And the wonderful thing about being a mentor is that you are that neutral sort of third party sounding board. So when the mentee is facing a particular challenge at work and sort of thinks, hmm, this is how I'm thinking of tackling this challenge, you're a great sounding board that can say, yeah, I think you're on the right track, or hey, have you thought about this? How can to probe and guide them to think about the challenge in perhaps a slightly different way that can actually get them to where they need to get to? And of course, we encourage you to be thinking about your mentee as a peer, right? They may be fairly new in their career and just starting off on their journey in HR, but certainly they can bring fresh and very new perspectives to you as well, which may help you in your own work environment as well. And we talked about being a sounding board, but we also um, need to focus on helping to partner with your, your mentee. And the great thing about the BCHR May is that there's a number of opportunities for you to partner and, and attend different events together, whether it's the mix and mingles, whether there's various uh, training sessions that are going on. That's a wonderful opportunity for you to, to bring your mentee along and perhaps introduce them to a wider circle of, of uh, professionals that you may be in contact with to help them to start to build their own network as well. So we'll spend a little bit of time now on the mentee. So as the mentee, really, this is your opportunity to drive this relationship in the sense of you're coming to your mentor not as a passive individual, but really being very proactive, having done your own homework, having thought through what you hope to establish and get out of the relationship over the next six months. And this is the only way that you, the two of you are going to be successful because the, it is truly the mentee's responsibility to define what you hope to get out of the relationship. And again, you need to also be playing a very active role, a role in terms of um, setting those goals for yourself throughout the uh, six months, and also being receptive and willing to get that coaching and that feedback. When your mentor is trying to probe a little bit and encourage you to think about things in a slightly different way, to be open and to be receptive to that. To also be flexible, you have to respect uh, the fact that your mentor may be a, you know, a very senior person in, in their particular organization, their schedules might be quite tight. There might be times where they need to reschedule things. So just be open and flexible around those types of things as well. And also follow through on your commitments. As you're meeting on a regular basis in partnership with your mentor, if there's particular things that you discussed and you said, okay, next time we're gonna talk about X, Y, or Z, that's your responsibility that when the next time you meet together that you've actually followed through on your commitments. And that helps to foster that relationship of trust if you're being accountable and doing your part, your mentor is also going to be there for you to support you to that next, pushing you to that next level. And, and again, as the last point as we had for the mentors as well, we really encourage both partners to work together. And when you have those uh, various mix and mingles or different educational opportunities, to go together. Because it's a great way for you to build your relationship with each other, but also a great opportunity to, to spend some time getting to know other folks as well. So I'm going to hand it over to Jane Marie now. Great, thanks Margaret. So I'm going to walk you through the various stages of the mentoring relationship. I'm just going to come over to this side. So when you're first starting out, and you might be first meeting your mentor at this orientation session, um, you're going to be starting to establish the relationship that you're going through as a mentor and a mentee. So the mentors are going to be listening and hearing what the mentees want to get out of this experience and talking about your various HR backgrounds to see what can overlap and what areas of expertise you can bring to the table. So you're going to start by agreeing on your short and long-term goals, and that's very much mentee-driven. The mentee is going to come to the table and say, these are the things that I want to learn. This is the areas that I've identified for myself to develop. And then at this stage, you're going to be wanting to build that trust. So you might want to be sharing a little bit more about your experiences and get starting to get to know each other. That's what will be happening in the, in the first stage. As we move on to the second stage where you're starting to share and develop that knowledge with each other, the mentors are going to share a little bit more about their experience to see what areas of their experience is going to overlap to assist with the mentees who have set their goals. The mentors begin to encourage the mentees and start thinking and pushing and encouraging them to take more risks in the areas that they've identified that they want to develop in. And the mentors are going to be, need to be prepared to share a little bit about themselves, to make themselves a bit more vulnerable, share their areas, how they've learned, things that are going to be able to assist in a relationship of getting to know each other. Then you're going to move on into the next stage, and you're going to be getting into that more of a working together, and you've got mutual respect that you've developed with each other. You're going to talk and confide in each other, perhaps about things that are confidential, and we'll talk a little bit about how we establish areas of confidentiality. 
and you're going to be able to evaluate your progress as you're, are we meeting our goals? Is this on target? Is this what we set out to do? How are we getting through this partnership? And you're going to get, and you're gaining a lot of momentum here, so you're going to be celebrating the successes that you have had to date. Then you're going to get to probably around the five or six month mark if you're going through this for the six months, or you can have the opportunity to extend throughout the summer and go for the nine month period. But it is a natural process to come to bring closure to this relationship. It does have a natural end. You set goals that you want to facilitate and develop through the six months, and those will come to a natural end. So the mentees are going to be a little bit more confident. They'll have look back on their progress and seeing what goals that they've developed and celebrate the success and do that by coming to the wrap-up event that Marguerite mentioned. Um, so that's kind of the stages that we go through and then mentors are saying, okay, what is next for you? So how do you set yourself up for success? What are some key points that are going to enable you to come through this partnership having achieved the goals that you want? And we need to talk about a little bit about managing expectations. How is this going to come to successful? So you're going to want to mutually agree on how we're setting up this relationship. So the first couple of things you need to think about is who's going to set up the meetings? Who's going to be in charge of saying, okay, we're going to meet here. How often are we going to meet? How will we communicate? Do I work better on the phone? Are you, is it going to be easier to grab me by email? Uh, how do I best express myself? How long are we going to meet for? We need to be cognizant of people's time. And there is a commitment of about two to four hours per month, but does that work for us? Let's make sure that we're setting up these parameters. What happens if we schedule something and one person isn't able to attend? We need to be cognizant and respectful of each other's time. And what's the best way for us to communicate? Text message, those types of things. Are we on Twitter, that kind of thing. We think about how we can reach each other. Is there any limitations we want to place on our meetings? These are just some things to think about when you're setting up the relationship. Like I mentioned, what level of confidentiality do we need? Some of these situations that we're discussing are very uh, sensitive information about our particular workplace. So we want to think about how do we keep these things confidential. And in our resource guide, there is information about the fact that this is a confidential relationship. What are our goals? How do we reach these goals? It's a very important process to come to the table with clearly identified goals that we want to achieve. And how are we going to be able to measure our progress throughout this particular partnership? And once we have reached those goals, how are we going to celebrate that? So we're going to take a look at those goals and give ourselves the opportunity to celebrate achieving them. How long do we think this will last? Do we want to extend it into the nine month period? And if there is conflict or if there is a situation that arises, how will we manage if one person has to or wants to end the relationship? So we talked a lot about goals, but just want to articulate that these are driven by the mentee. The mentee identifies the areas that they want more experience in and sets up the goals that they want to achieve. So here's some questions to think about coming from the mentee side. What areas have I identified in my career perhaps or have I identified public speaking like myself as a goal that I want to achieve throughout this mentoring experience? What are my development goals? What areas do I need more and more experience in throughout my HR career? What assistance can my mentor provide? And this goes back to the stages when you're sharing your um, relationships and the mentor talks about his experience or her experience and where do those areas overlap when you're setting your goals? Is it, for example, in a total compensation, which was one of my goals last year, and my mentee, mentor introduced me to her total compensation director so that we could overlap areas that I'd identified to develop in. What, um, also, your, your mentor could be thinking about who can I introduce that will also assist in this partnership? And how are you going to measure progress? We talked about that. And the acronym that comes to mind that people always use are, are, are these SMART goals? Are they specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and is there a time specific uh, time to them coming to a natural close of the six month partnership or the nine months should you choose? 
So, some of the questions that the mentor might think is, how does my mentee fast learn? Is this person that wants to be able to read things? Is it, are we better dialoguing? Those are types of things that, to identify. How, what kind of activities can we do to assist the mentee achieve their goals? Are we going to go to different networking events if that's a goal? Or are we going to a Toastmasters, for example, if that's a public speaking goal, that type of thing? And how, as the mentor, how have I learned in the past? What activities have I done that have helped me achieve my goals? Those are some of the things that the mentor can bring to the table to say, here's an idea. I've done this previously, and that can help you in this particular area that you've identified. Who can I introduce them to, for example? Who in my uh, professional network can I say that this can assist with this particular goal? And again, measure the progress so that you can celebrate your achievements. So when you're having these meetings, we want to be recognized that these are important. They're time sensitive, but how can we make the most out of it? Because it's not just uh, you know, having more and more meetings, it's having quality meetings that help us achieve our, and get our results. What do we want to focus on? What message do we want to communicate? So when we're coming to the table, this is the area that we've identified that we want to learn in. How am I going to use this feedback to, and develop this to measure against my goals? And for the mentor, what role are you going to play? We've talked about being a sounding board. We've talked about um, giving experience, talking about the previous experiences that you've had. During certain relationships, there can be conflict. And we want to talk a little bit about how we manage conflict should any arise. So one of the things to do is identify what is the source of the conflict. If you don't know, record how you will explain your feelings to your mentor or your mentee. How do you want to communicate? What particular area would you be willing to compromise on that will um, achieve some success to resolving the conflict? So if we want to identify those. What steps will you take to move the relationship forward? How are we going to get past this? What can we do to move on? And how we use establish a supportive climate for this discussion. We want to make sure that there's uh, an even communication process that this doesn't escalate. And I just want to also point out that you should have been contacted by your portfolio manager. So there is always the resource of your volunteers, the BCHRMA. So I just want to point out that those resources are available for you. So here's a little uh, worksheet that is also in your um, resource guide that I would encourage you to read. These have been mailed out to you, or you can pick up a, a copy on your way. So this is always a good tool, I find, to setting up your first meeting and, and moving throughout the relationship. So what identify what you accomplish? What would a successful meeting look like? Could be different for the mentor, could be different to the mentee. So let's communicate and establish what that would be. Who's going to run the meetings? And what role will each of you play? So this is just a, a good, useful worksheet. And these are some other resources. So we talked about the resource guide. I particularly like the mentoringgroup.com. I think it's a great website. Um, you'll note also on page six of your resource guide, there's some process and tips for a successful mentoring relationship. So I'd encourage you all to have a read of that when you've got some time. Of course, Liz is always available as a resource as well. And this is the mentoring program team. So that's also included in your resource guide. So you've got some email addresses and phone numbers if you need to reach them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move to the panel session. So I'd like to invite TJ and Marion, who is the mentor representatives for us. I'm very happy that you guys have decided to join. And thank you in advance. And I'm going to be uh, representing the mentees as Mark mentioned. So just have a seat. <coughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to we prepare some questions for them, and then of course we're going to open up to the floor and give you all an opportunity to ask questions as well. And this is probably one of the best ways for us to learn because it's going to be a chance for us to hear firsthand from folks who've acted as mentors in, in a program and also are acting as mentees currently. But I'm sure all of you sitting there have your own questions as well. So I encourage you as I start things off to be thinking about the kinds of questions that you may have yourself. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our mentors and then we'll move over to our mentee in terms of our questioning. So first question for you, Marianne. Um, one of the, the biggest stumbling blocks for a successful mentoring partnership is really around setting clear and concise goals. 
So can you tell us a little bit from your own experience, how have you handled that in the past? Yeah, well, I certainly can. Um, so I think in general, so of course, it's just a tricky thing. We like to uh, move in action mode, and I think that's not only in mentor and mentee relationships, but just in general. Um, so yeah, I fell into that trap a couple of times myself as well, not being really clear about what I wanted to get out of the relationship. And over time, I've kind of realized if you want to achieve something in six months, you have to be quite clear and specific in your goals, because six months, as said, is not an awful long time. So I think it is uh, what I've experienced. It's very important that you hold each other accountable for that part, that you actually ask each other about the goals and not skip over it. It's very easy that the relationship turns into a very nice like a coffee meeting and you have a good relationship but you're not getting a lot out of it. That's my experience. Great, great point. How about for yourself, TJ? Sure, some great points. I think uh, one of the first things is to um, uh, consider that you need to set your goals uh, right, at, right off the top. Um, the approach that I've found to be really helpful is that uh, before the first meeting I've asked uh, you know, my mentees to uh, come up with uh, three or four goals that they might want to massage and, and look at because uh, as Marianne says, uh, you sit down for that coffee and uh, you can easily get lost in the getting to know you process without focusing on um, you know, some key, uh, key points. Uh, one of the things that guides me in the uh, goal setting process because uh, having clear goals can be difficult is really starting with the question of what does good look like uh, at the end of the mentoring relationship and using that as a guide to say, okay, what are the things that you want to achieve out of this relationship? Uh, what does good look like six months from now and, and uh, looking forward? Um, I think the other piece for me is that uh, you can set the goals, but you're going to need to revisit them, as you mentioned. Um, so I found it useful every time you meet with your mentor to uh, go back to the goals just have a real quick look and say, okay, are these still relevant? Do they still uh, articulate what we're working on? Do we need to tweak them? And even though that sounds a little formal, uh, actually go back and, and reword them uh, if necessary. Um, and uh, I guess that means the, the other part is that you got to write them down. And I've found a lot of mentoring relationships that I talk to where the goals aren't written down, they're kind of that great discussion off the top. So write them down, carry them with you, and. Uh, uh, and massage. Great, it's a great tip, sir, because certainly, you know, things change in our lives. You know, you might change jobs, so all kinds of things could happen in the course of those six months. Some good tips there. Okay, next question for you, Miriam. We know that mentoring is a two-way relationship, so tell us a little bit about what you have gained as a mentor from your past mentoring experiences. Yeah, certainly. Um, so, first of all, I think it's great to connect with other HR people and um, just establishing relationships because it's a small community and um, you will run into each other in the longer term for sure. Um, so what I've gained is also learning from their experience. So if I had mentees, um, so they were in larger corporations than I was, and it was very interesting to hear their experience in certain areas because I'm an HR advisor with like a mid-sized company, I'm very much a journalist, so I found it very interesting to hear about their specialties. Uh, also, it helped me to understand a lot about coaching and mentoring and how far you can go. I mean, you step in quite excited and initially I was very like, okay, well, let's get this going, very active and realizing, well, it's not, it's important to be active, but it's, it's more important to let the mentee lead the relationship because otherwise you find yourself pushing and there's nothing coming out and that can be a little bit frustrating. Um, so that is something that I've definitely learned over time, to step back and see like, to what extent the mentee is taking the lead and then encourage that. Yeah. Great point, and emphasize what we talked about earlier in terms of it's really a mentee-driven relationship. The mentors there support you and, and guide you, but it's, you know, the, the focus of, of the time together is really coming from the mentees. Great point. For you, same question. Well, that's, uh, that's a, uh, a hard uh, one to follow because you covered off a whole bunch of points that, that I think are relevant uh, in my experience, too. Um, I think the other part, though, is that in order to make it that two-way relationship and really where I found the greatest value in learning from uh, the experiences of another organization through my uh, mentee is really making sure 
uh, that you work through a problem-solving model versus a, a solution-oriented model. And, and I think all of us in HR, uh, our desire is to uh, look at a situation and try and figure out how are we going to fix this or how are we going to manage this or how are we going to take the steps forward. Uh, so uh, I think where I've had the greatest learnings uh, through the process and where it works best is if it's actually a problem-solving of uh, what are the options? How might we uh, uh, work through this and then actually work through the, the issues that way? That's where I found the greatest value because it's easy to come up with, well, here's my gut reaction on what I would do, but you don't necessarily work through the, uh, the opportunity to learn from it. Good points. Okay. So next question. If you had a one piece of advice in Iran to give all of the mentors who are sitting in the room or just are embarking on a mentoring relationship perhaps for the first time. What would that piece of advice be? Um, my piece of advice would be to set your boundaries. I've been in the situation that I was asked to um, help a mentee with, with, it was basically a job search, and that is not something I consider to be part of this kind of relationship. I um, didn't know at the time exactly what to do, but I felt like no, this is not what I wanted to do, so I discussed it. I connected with the BCHRME, and we came, we came to a solution for that. So I think very important, set your boundaries. If you feel like this is not going into the right direction, don't hesitate to reach out and come to a resolution early on. That's, that's a great one. I know this is something that Liz has mentioned that comes up quite often, and I think that's excellent advice for all the mentors in the room. It's really your responsibility as well to, to set those clear boundaries about what you're comfortable with, what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do. So that's an excellent example. What would you teach you? Well, it, 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 may mo it may not be sexy and cool, but uh, you know, I think that the most important thing is uh, plan your work and work your plan uh, with the idea of uh, what came off the slides and, and what has already uh, come out of our discussion today is the idea of uh, how is the relationship going to work? Uh, what are the expectations? How often are you going to meet? And as much as it's pretty stodgy to have a coffee meeting, and I know my a mentee would probably tell you if she was in the room alone with you that it, it was a little formal at first, but get through that uh, the first time. Uh, it's easy, uh, your metaphor at the beginning of a, a coffee date, um, uh, you know, it's so easy to fall into that. Have the framework, and then uh, from there you can uh, figure out what the, what the best relationship is. Yes. Um, okay, so over to you again, Marianne. So what can mentees do to get the most out of the mentoring process? Having had some mentees over the years, what's your advice to them? Yeah, but I, I'm afraid I'm going to sound like a broken record, but it <laughs> is that proactivity. It is very much if you're signing up for this, because first of all, realize what you're signing up for, and then follow through and be actively participating and driving the relationship. That is, I think, the best you can do as a mentee to, to get the most out of it. Thank you. TJ, look at yourself. What's your advice to the mentees? Yeah, there's, there's no question that the relationship is uh, what you make it. And, uh, you know, if a, if a mentee is looking to get something out of the relationship, really uh, driving to, to try and uh, uh, achieve that. Um, I love that conversation that starts out with, hey, we were talking last time about X, and I'm just... I had some thoughts and here's some stuff that I discovered. What a great way to start the conversation if the mentee is coming forward and saying, hey, I've, I've looked into this and I, I want to chat about this. What do you think? That just is uh, fantastic. It's awesome. So what we're hearing is be prepared. Be prepared to make the most out of every one of those um, interactions with your mentor. So last question for both of you. Are there any particular books or resources that you think would be quite helpful as, as folks are starting on, on this, this journey together as mentors or as mentees? Anything that you've used in the past that would be helpful? I was looking at it at the weekend and I kind of like okay. That's okay. I got the resources through the beach here, ABC, I There we go, so we know our resources are good. Okay. Yeah, to know that for me. How about yourself, TJ? Yeah, I was thinking about are there some books that I've read out there about coaching or uh, uh, mentoring or providing feedback? And, and uh, they're all pretty um, boring. <laughs> uh, so really, I was thinking about in terms of well, what what would uh, drive some of the conversation in a way that uh, that could be helpful, no matter what the topic or what your goals are. 
Uh, so I went right back to the basics. Uh, one of my favorite books is First Break All the Rules. I, I really think that that generates some incredible conversation and pushes to uh, talking a little bit about uh, thinking differently. And I think that in HR, uh, it, it's so important for us not to be thinking about how things have always been done, but how they can best be done and, and looking at current best practices. So that, um, that's one that I thought was uh, useful. And there's one more uh, I've just uh, read recently. It's a brand new book uh, that just came out called The Enemy of Engagement. Engagement is such a cliche and it's, it's such a misunderstood concept mm -hmm. in organizations. It's a, a buzzword that I don't think we necessarily always understand. Mm -hmm. So I think that also is a, another book that I'd recommend just for the, the benefit of good conversation fodder. Great. Yeah. Some good tips there. Okay, so thank you to both of you. We're going to move over to uh, Jane Marie. So from the mentee's perspective, Jane Marie, uh, what makes for a successful mentoring experience? Um, well, we've talked a lot about goals, so I'm not going to belabor that <laughs> point. So set your goals and communicate. But I think from the mentee, it's, it's being open to receiving the advice. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to hear some coaching or some advice tips, so I would for me, it's important to be open and hear and learn from what the mentor is offering as coaching tips or, or areas to develop on. So listening to advice, I say, is a, is a great way of where to start. Great, thank you. Now, I know you're trying to avoid goals, but I'm going to ask you a little <laughs> bit about goals because we do know that is can be a stumbling block, you know, both for the mentors and for the mentees. And we had some great advice from the mentors there. So from a mentee's perspective, you know, what's, your, what's been your experience in terms of how do you really get a good firm grasp on, uh, grasp, pardon me, on uh, setting those goals for yourself? Well, you really need to look at what areas that you want to develop on. If, is there a particular point that you're at in your career? Is there certain areas that you wanted to learn and grow from? For myself, through my last mentoring experience, it was the total compensation area that I wanted to develop a little bit more about, so um, that was one of the goals that I set. I'd also identified that I wanted to network more. I'm a sole provider of HR at my current company, so that was an area that I wanted to, to develop. So some of those things sort of come naturally. It's, easy, it's an area that you can easily identify. Um, when I first started at, in the mentoring program, I was taking my CHRP exam, so getting some tips and tricks from my mentor who had taken the exam was also an area that I identified. So some of those things uh, come naturally, and but also hearing from my mentor about their experiences also can assist me to s see what resources I can draw from what they have learned in their previous or past HR career. So I know, uh, Jane Marie, that you've been in the program um, as a mentee for a number of years, and I know this time, this year you're a mentor for the first time as well. But in terms of your own um, goals this time around as a mentee, why have you continued one more round? Why have you decided that you'd like to be a mentee? What do you hope to get out of it this moment? Sure. Well, as I mentioned, I'm a sole provider. So it's really important for me to be able to have like a team or an, a sounding board. I don't have anyone to sort of talk things through. So that's really an area that I wanted to still be able to have a resource to draw on. And uh, I, I want to be able to progress in my career. And I think getting that advice and getting that coaching is going to be able to assist me. Uh, it's always, you know, you want a second pair of eyes on something. So that's sort of an area that I wanted to develop in. So that's why I've continued with the program. I also think it's a it's a great resource. It's a it's a great way to network and. Um, you know, you're, we're continually learning as HR people. The, the world and the, the ballpark is always changing, so it's nice to hear from other people and, and uh, you know, get that experience, learn from somebody else. So last question for you. Uh, what were some of the, the key things that you gained in the, in the last mentoring experience that you had, mm -hmm. and um, what else do you hope to focus on for this particular cycle? Sure. Um, well, as I mentioned, the CHRP exam was something that I went through a couple of years ago. But uh, map mapping out career progress is something that I started to do with my previous mentor last year. And it was uh, really focused on being strategic and where do I go next and not being so transactional based, but you know, being more progressive and thinking about long-term goal setting. And just getting that insight from a seasoned HR professional is, is something that I'm, why I'm still staying in the program. Thank you so much. Okay, so those are my pre-prepared questions. So over to you now. Does anyone have any questions for anyone at all? Mentees have so many goals and they're so fast and 
they can be, when you first hear, they're almost like a five-year plan. So how do you help them hone down and identify which key factors to focus on to reach that ultimate goal, which might be five years down the road? Do you go through a process for that, or? Yeah. I take it? Sure. Sorry. <laughs> we both have something to say about it. Um, so it's, it's looking at that big goal and breaking it down in smaller pieces. Um, I think it's also setting the priorities, what's important for you right now to work on and what's the longer term. Um, yeah, to me that is a process. It takes some time. That's not done and said in, in one session. So I'm not sure if there's any, anything special that I would do other than what I would do in general if it comes to goals, look at like, well, how big are they really and what are, like, if you put it against a timeline, what's achievable within the next six months and what has a priority, because I think also sometimes people mix up, like, um, they think they have about ten goals, but if you really ask what is important, and a lot of goals tend also to end up in the same results, then I think you can count out a number of goals. So James, do you have to add on that? Or? I, I think that's great. The time frame is, is good and really uh, talking through together to say, okay, so uh, how would you get there? Um, and uh, talking about what are the steps. Um, you can pretty quickly find that six months is not a very long period of time. And so uh, backing off the bigger goal and looking for one of the pieces of that bigger goal for sure uh, as part of this relationship. Um, you can still make that part of their plan, and they can yeah. they can uh, expand that out. But six months is, is not a lot if you think about meeting once or twice a month um, to to do some follow up. Why is that? Good question. Any other questions from anyone else in the room? I have one from yeah. a mentee perspective. What kinds of interactions? We talked about the coffee date. Um, were there any other activities or? Um, opportunities to get together you found valuable from a mentee perspective? Sure, um, I've been to a couple of the BC at Charmaine mingles and I think that they're a, an easy and great way to, to do things, uh, especially as they don't really impact your working day. They usually start after work at 5.30 mm -hmm. um, and they're fairly informal and then what you can do is listen to those speakers and then talk about what you each got out of the uh, situation. I've also been to the conferences as well, and my mentor might have gone to different sessions, so we could compare notes about different speakers, that type of thing was useful. Um, and then just meeting on the phone as well, talking about, you know, I had a particular situation arise in the workplace, so my mentor was available to be reached by phone. So those types of things, if they're very specific questions, there's usually an, an easy uh, result for that. But those are the types of things that I've done. Obviously, the, the coffee date and the lunch date too, because that kind of gives a social interaction when you're getting to know someone. But my mentor was mentoring two people, and one of her mentees also had a, men a mentee. So the four of us got together, which was which was nice and useful because it's you know part of my goal was networking, so it was a good way to meet more people in the HR community. So those are some things that we had done. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any last questions in the room? Okay, well then I would like to thank everyone on our panel today for taking some time to come up here and be on the watch seat. I'm going to head back to Liz to wrap up for the session. So lots of good points and uh, Matthew writing away as, as people were speaking and I think there are some common themes that really jump out um, for me. Um, certainly we've, we've spoken um, uh, to the importance of the goal setting and just how critical that is to the success of, of the relationship. And, um, I think to the question that was asked, um, you know, some, some really uh, sage advice from our um, mentors. And, and again, you know, reiterating um, uh, Jane Marie's uh, earlier reference to SMART goals, and, and I think we, we do have to be, um, you know, particularly cognizant of the time factor and, and that the goals do uh, or are realistic um, for sure. You know, some of the changes um, that have happened in this program, this is the fifth year, I believe, that I've been involved in the mentoring program, and as I touched on, um, at the beginning, certainly the, the pace of change within the industry, let alone uh, certainly the association, has been 
uh, huge, and and with that, um, you know, as I mentioned as well, the the um, the people that are coming into the mentoring program, and, and typically uh, when I began, it, it really was that mid-level professional who was looking to. Um, uh, help guide you know some of our newer uh, emerging professionals, student members, and such into the program. But what came out of that uh, as well was a real need and, and drive for those individuals as well to seek mentors um, as they were moving through their own uh, career paths as well. And so that's something, as I mentioned, um, we are really wanting to to address and, and um, be able to support. And we are very, very fortunate uh, to have a, a tremendous uh, membership who are very devoted uh, uh, and, and strong advocates of mentoring uh, in the association. So um, that is something that um, has not changed, certainly, in the CHRMA. Um, a couple of uh, other pieces that I uh, picked up uh, along, you know, again, how, the, how mentoring is changing and, and clearly um, you know, the model that we are supporting and, and wanting to uh, promote is that of one that is mentee driven without a doubt. And it really is uh, incumbent upon the mentee to have given some thought to, to what their uh, goals and, and uh, you know, asking themselves, where do I want to be? Uh, where do I want to go? And, and um, where do I want to be? So I think that is the element as well that, uh, uh, you know, really hitting home. Uh, Certainly, um, as I've worked with, uh, had the privilege to work with some of the mentoring committees throughout the province, um, a lot of time has been spent on um, things like changing the application process so that we um, are getting uh, some real um, uh, committed individuals coming into the program, and, and uh, so we're continuing to do that. Uh, as well, just the notion of um, uh, reverse mentoring, I think that that's something as well that um, anecdotally, uh, you know, when we come to the end of the program and, and uh, you know, we're sharing successes at the end of the time together, um, that's something that I hear more and more of and just how uh, the, uh, the mentor has benefited as much as the mentee in terms of that sharing of information and the insights that they, um, that they have shared. I think the key pieces um, you know, as you get going, certainly, and I think of my um, uh, dear old mother and her sage advice, and, and that is keeping the lines of communication open. Invariably, when the relationships, or, or we hear of the relationships having failed, it's when that communication has not um, been consistent throughout the, the time together. And, um, and certainly on the relationship piece, um, take the time to get to know uh, your, your mentee or your mentor at the outset. You know, we certainly do understand and appreciate that, um, you know, as much as, as uh, you know, a considerable amount of time has been gone or has been taken to uh, try and produce the best possible matches, um, there are circumstances where, where the fit is just not there. So we would far rather hear that, um, you know, as early as possible. and, and um, uh, again, uh, to the team that are in place, we have a wonderful uh, team of volunteers who, who have been with the program for uh, a number of years now and, and are there as a resource, um, as well as myself, in the event that you um, encounter any of those challenges along the way as you do get going. So uh, I think we will wrap it up there. And uh, again, to thank um, Jane Marie and also uh, Marguerite for presenting this morning. Uh, best of luck in your uh, in your next few months, and um, uh, good, best of luck. Thank you.